Hello everybody, Dren608 here, back with another Unconditional Surrender Europe, designed by Salvatore Vasta, published by GMT Games. Um, this is the East First series. Um, I have two going uh, concurrently. There's another one that's called the German Diplomatic Disaster, um, which is entertaining in and of itself. This was uh, something a little different, with Germany trying to take out the USSR to begin with. Um, pop up our little boxes here. And now we're going to weather. Weather was horrible in October for my opponent. So we go to the weather phase. Um, well, I think this is me messing around with... What did we do here? Oh dear. Oh, that's me just setting things to defaults. Uh, and so he rolled a 226, which, if you look at the card, uh, in November and October was severe. So that's the bottom line here. A 2 is poor. Um, a 2 is fair in the mild zone. And a 6 is poor in the Mediterranean. So... Two things moved. We're going to declarations of war, and we didn't have any. Uh, economies. It's just us setting ourselves where we need it to be. Going to strategic warfare. Um, the Germans still don't have anything to play, neither do the Russians. So. Um, Germany's at plus one, and I'm at plus two. Uh, did he declare war on... Oh, that's me playing around with the uh, Will's markers. Um, so, he rolled a four plus one. And I rolled a one plus three. So, five to three... And that made the Soviets go down by one. I mean, the Germans are very happy. Uh, strategic movement. Um, I think it's the 11th here. I think he started to try to move it, and I pointed out... Uh, where did he move it to? Oh, he moved it. He was going to move it, and then I pointed out that it wouldn't be able to be replenished. And... And he moved this Yugoslavian. What did he do? Ah, uh, boy, I'm not sure what he did here. Twenty-two to twenty-nine forty-nine. Twenty-nine forty-nine. I think he brought another Yugoslavian in. Oh, no, he brought a German garrison down here. Uh, And then he had brought in the, uh, since he had the Spanish threatening me here, I decided to move the BEF down here instead of at Lil. Um, and the Soviets moved, they move here. Knowing it was at poor weather, I think I moved another infantry here in front of Moscow. And we got into Axis operations. It is poor weather, so he can actually get some pluses from his airplanes and such. Uh, fourth Army. Okay, here we go into <coughs> Estonia again. So I started off at minus two. And I did have a ground support, so I'm pretty sure I played it here. He's at, starts off at plus two, and then minus one for the city, minus one for the weather. So I had played my ground support, so it's uh, zero to minus one. He rolled a one. I rolled a four. So nothing happened there. 
And then I didn't get my ground support for six more turns. <laughs> so things are not going well here. Um, uh, he did make a mistake there. He probably should have gone and moved this guy. One, two, three, four, five, six. Because then he would have gotten plus two for it being isolated. Uh, and I didn't see that. I think we're doing airplanes here. Yeah, minus three to minus four. You got a one, so you got one sortie. I'm not sure who he. So we just took one sortie there. We moved this infantry forward, declared an assault. Moved the armored up to there to declare an assault. Um, we're setting the die roll modifiers here. So it was, you know, plus. Three for the armor, plus one for the buddy, and then minus one for the city. Minus one for the forest, minus one for the weather. Um, I was at a zero. We're in combat commitment here. We both committed. Uh, he threw his airplane. I threw a tank. I think I threw an airplane in as well. Yeah, the guy that used to have three now has four. So I threw another I threw an airplane against his airplane. Um, because he was because it's poor weather, he's minus four, I'm minus four. Neither one of us can do two sorties, so we just took one and got to add our plus ones. So it's plus three to plus two. He rolled a five net, I rolled a four net. So that stopped that assault altogether. Um, he activates garrison up here in the swamp. Moved it down to there. I think he moved up here. Yeah, he did an assault on Kursk. Started off at zero to zero. Oh, combat commitment. We committed. Um, I committed, he did not, so I got a plus one from the airplane up in Orel. He rolled a six, but I rolled a five plus one, which was a six, so that stopped that assault. Uh, I think he moved an airplane up to Demopstrik. And then, what did he do here? Oh, he moved, yeah, he moved into there. Decided he was going to do an assault this way. Oh, we're in combat commitment. So right now he's plus three minus one. He should be at plus two. Oh, this is us doing the air combat. He didn't roll a six, so we just took one sortie. Now we're resetting the combat die roll modifier. Plus one. Uh, he's plus two for German, plus one for a buddy, plus one for the airplane, minus one for the weather. 
3 plus 3 was a 6, and I managed to only get a 4. So, um, let me get that go away. Uh, and so he was able to move an army in, which is what he wanted. Uh, and then he assaulted there. Uh, must be in combat commitment. Yep, we're in combat commitment. We're both committed. We both threw in airplanes here. Pretty sure that's all we threw in. Yeah, it's plus three to plus one. I got a six to a two. I couldn't retreat, so I was flipped. And then he moved the Romanians in to do an assault. Officially in combat commitment. I did not. It's minus one to minus two. I uh, forgot that he had a ground support marker, so he got himself up to zero. Uh, and he rolled a six. And I rolled a four minus two, which was a retreat, so I was eliminated. Took my will down by another point, so I'm down to 25. Minions move in. Uh, that was him rolling for his ground support. Instead of rolling the blue die, he just rolled the attacker die. Gets it back in a turn. Uh, not sure. Oh, he's moving forward. And then he goes and moves this uh, German over here. In Narvik. Not sure why he only moved six. Uh, Uh, he's going to move Yugoslav up. That's right. Moves a Yugoslav uh, down into the river bend. Then he moved his last Romanian. Thought about that and said, no, wait, I can go here. And just say, that's it. I'm done. Now, I know for the next five turns, the best he's going to get is... Uh, the next three turns, the best he's going to get is severe. And I'm always going to have poor in the in USSR. And then two turns after that, the best he can get is poor. So I basically have five turns of kind of nothing going to happen here. Uh, Western, what did I do? Oh, I moved the mobile unit down to the Spanish border. He's being paranoid. Supply the British. Soviets. Thirty-seven ten. I'm trying to remember what I did. Thirty-seven ten, huh? No. Oh, it's the. Uh, sorry, I'm logged in as the as the Soviets in this game. Uh, 
So we now actually go into the Soviet operations phase. And then I was looking to see air ranges, I think, from this guy up here. Trying to figure out who could reach this five-point airplane. And I decided to go ahead and do that, and make him go up. And then I moved this guy in Moscow out. How did I do this? Oh, because I have a dead unit coming? I don't know what the heck I'm thinking about here. So I did an assault on the Panzer. Oh, that's right. I got here because I could get an isolated Panzer. So I was 2, 3, 4, minus 1, plus 3 to plus 3 right now. And his airplane can't reach there, so I think I end up with plus... He is plus 3, or 4, and I was plus 5? One, two, three, four, five, and then it should be minus one for the weather. So plus four to plus four. I thought it was worth a shot. If I could flip the Panzer, it would mess up his production somewhat. And then I threw a tanks in to also give me plus five. I knew there was a reason why I did this. So and then I rolled a two. You know, this is the time you want to see a five or a six. So a grand total of seven to his plus four, I can't hurt him. No matter what I did, even if he rolled a one, he would have had six and wouldn't have been touched. Or five, and he should wouldn't have been touched. So that was a complete waste of resources. Uh, I put this infantry out because, in poor weather, I'm not too scared of what he can do, based on my zones of control. So I spent four points, you know, to do that. Uh, I didn't do anything in the south. I guess I didn't do anything in the south. Uh, we're into the no supply phase. Axis replacements. He has 13 left. Actually, I think he had 12 left. We did a recount. Um, and he brings down his fighters. And the west, I believe, just yeah, fixes the fleets. Placements of the Soviets. Uh, started in the ones... Oh, dang it. Bringing up the wrong box. Uh, started in the ones... From the four to the five, so I spent nine. Which left me at six. And one to flip. I had I had one guy that was flipped somewhere that I had to flip back over. Not sure where. Somehow I had a guy that needed to be flipped. Don't know why I spent 10 there. Oops, I'm blowing right through the... Mobilization phase. Great mobilization. Oh, he wanted to look at the diplomacy cup to figure out if, how much he wanted, if he wanted to go for diplomacy. So he had two successes, one failure, and four no events. So we put all those back. And he went ahead and built the Panzer Army because if you look at his national tracks, um,
that would take him under five, and he just figured what the heck, it wasn't worth it. And then we came down to the diplomacy phase, went into the Wests, and spent five. Not sure what I did. Oh, I put another political success and a no event in there. <clears throat> my, th my thought here was I'm going to stack up the political successes and let the Russians pull because their political failure doesn't hurt me nearly as bad. But a political success would get rid of either Italy or Spain. And I got a no event, so it didn't matter. <laughs> uh... Went to the victory check, and we did a turn end here. Uh, this is us just getting our stuff back. No big deal. Uh, just get my tanks back. He gets his gr some ground supports back. And, and he got his submarines, finally. Uh, the Ural's factories should be moved up to February. And I should have gotten another point on the Urals factory track. Am I not? There it goes. Okay. Uh, and then the Russian winter goes into effect. So on the front card, on the weather track, you'll see that the Russian winter is in the poor zone. The weather in the cold zone is, no matter what, is going to be severe. And the weather in Russia will always be poor for the next three turns. Uh, come March, this goes away forever. Having the Russian winter in the winter of 1940 is not nearly as good for the Russians as it is if it's in 41 because they don't have any shock armies, so they can't really mount any kind of real offensive. And that's the end of this particular log. Um, I'm going to make a quick check and see if we're going to make this a short one or if I'll add another turn and end out the year. I might go ahead and add another turn in a disjointed ven ven uh -huh. somewhat disjointed vending video. God, I can't speak tonight. So um, I'm going to take a quick pause here, and I'll be back either with an epilogue or we'll just add on another turn. Be back in a sec. Okay, I checked. I'm a little over 20 minutes. I don't think I could get another turn in and keep it under 30 uh, a lot of these have been going over because we've been doing multiple turns, so I'm going to slow down a little bit here. So, I'm John608. If you like my videos, please subscribe. Um, hit the like button, the little thumbs up thing. Uh, it helps keep these videos uh, alive on YouTube. And we will be back with uh, December of 1940 next time. Until then, stay safe and bye-bye.